now. can if you want. You're okay.
in el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y de los Espíritu Santo. La paz esté con ustedes. From the heart, I welcome all of you to this joyous day. I welcome in a special way the families of our two new bishops. I welcome my brother priests and deacons and religious and in a special way, the wonderful bishops who have joined us on this happy occasion. Brothers and sisters, before we dare to listen to the Word of God and share together the bread of life, let us ask the Father to forgive our sins. I confess, Almighty God, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
Oremos, Dios nuestro, que por pura generosidad de tu gracia quieres elevar hoy al ministerio del sumo sacerdocio a estos presbíteros siervos tuyos. Concédeles ejercer dignamente el misterio episcopal y conducir con la palabra y el ejemplo guiados siempre por ti a la grey que les has confiado. Por nuestro Señor Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, y es Dios por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí, porque me ha ungido y me ha enviado para anunciar la buena nueva a los pobres, a curar a los de corazón quebrantado, a proclamar el perdón a los cautivos y la libertad a los prisioneros, a pregonar el año de gracia del Señor, el día de la venganza de nuestro Dios. El Señor me ha enviado a consolar a los afligidos, a los afligidos de Sion, a cambiar su ceniza en diadema, sus lágrimas en aceite perfumado de alegría y su abatimiento en cánticos. Palabra de Dios. Oh! 
Lectura del apóstol San Pablo a los Efesios. Hermanos, yo Pablo, prisionero por la causa del Señor, los exhorto a que lleven una vida digna del llamamiento que han recibido. Sean siempre humildes y amables. Sean comprensivos y soportense mutuamente con amor. Esfuércense en mantenerse unidos en el Espíritu con el vínculo de la paz. Porque no hay más que un solo cuerpo y un solo Espíritu, como es también solo una la esperanza del llamamiento que ustedes han recibido. Un solo Señor, una sola fe, un solo bautismo, un solo Dios Padre de todos, que reina sobre todos, actúa a través de todos y vive en todos. Cada uno de nosotros ha recibido la gracia en la medida en que Cristo se la ha dado. Él fue quien concedió a unos ser apóstoles, a otros ser profetas, a otros ser evangelizadores, a otros ser pastores y maestros, y esto para capacitar a los fieles a fin de que, desempeñando debidamente su tarea, construyan el cuerpo de Cristo, hasta que todos lleguemos a estar unidos en la fe y en el conocimiento del Hijo de Dios y lleguemos a ser hombres perfectos que alcancemos en todas sus dimensiones la plenitud de Cristo. Palabra de Dios.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus revealed himself to his disciples, and when they had finished breakfast, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him at the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord.
Your Eminence, the Holy Catholic Church, our Mother, asks you to ordain these priests, Juan Esposito Garcia and Evelio Menjivar Aliala, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Then let them be read. I introduce now our Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christoph Pierre, the Holy Father's personal representative. Thank you, Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory, Cardinal Well, Cardinal O'Malley, Cardinal Rosa Chavez, Your Excellency Archbishop Broglio, President of the USCCB, dear brother bishops and other guests from El Salvador and visitors from Argentina, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the Archdiocese of Washington, dear friends. I wish to greet in a particular way and thank Bishop Mario Dorsonville, you know him? Who recently <laughs> you know who recently and promptly accepted the Holy Father's call to become the Bishop of Uma Thibodeau. Have you heard about Uma Thibodeau? <laughs> I know that uh, your pastoral heart, which has led you to give such generous service in this archdiocese as both priest and bishop, will find ample opportunities for service to the people of your new diocese. In expressing the appreciation of this local church, I bid you bon voyage. <laughs> it, this is not without reason, isn't it? But I add in hope. Hasta luego. Au revoir. Thank you. <laughs> I am pleased to be with you all today, representing the Holy Father Pope Francis in this historical cathedral of St. Matthew. Here, Bishop elect Juan Esposito Garcia and Evelio Manjiva Rayala will be ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and begin their ministry as auxiliary bishops of Washington and close collaborators of Cardinal Wilton Gregory. Dear Bishop elect, on September 23, 2015, in this very cathedral, Pope Francis spoke to the bishops of the United States. Bishop Elec Esposito, in your introductory news conference, you recounted these words that the Holy Father said on this day, more than seven years ago. I quote, whenever a hand reaches out to do good or to show the love of Christ, to dry a tear or bring comfort to the lonely, to show the way to one who is lost, or to console a broken heart, to help the fallen, or to teach those thirsting for truth, to forgive, or to offer a new start in God, know that the Pope is at your side. The Pope supports you. He puts his hand on your own, a hand wrinkled with age, but by God's grace, still able to support and encourage." And of quote. Bishop elect Mahiba, at the news conference in December, you expressed your intention, I quote, to walk with the people of God, sharing their own challenges, celebrating and even crying together, to be with them in the joyful moments as well as the not so joyful moments. Your words remind me of something that Pope Francis shared with bishops some time ago from a text called The Beatitudes for a Bishop. He said, blessed is the bishop who is not afraid to wet his face with tears so that in them may be reflected the sorrow of the people and the work of priests 
and who finds God's consolation in the embrace of those who suffer. Bishop Elek Exposito and Mehivar. There is a special joy today for the members of this local church who have come to, from Latin American nations, as you have, especially Argentinians and Salvadorans, and quiero saludar de modo especial sus familias, sus amigos de Argentina, aquí hay son, eh? y de Salvador, son separados. Eh? Pero bueno. <laughs> But we all share this joy in celebrating your ordination as bishops. And we look forward to your ministry to the pilgrim people of God throughout this archdiocese. We look forward to the ways in which you will walk with God's people, accompany them in their sufferings, and help them to feel the joy of the risen Christ. We know that this is the deepest desire for both of you and we trust that God will give you the grace to carry out this ministry as bishops. And so, I now have the joy to read the translation of the apostolic letters of appointment of each one of you. It's a bit long because there are two. Huh? <laughs> Francis, bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Juan Rafael Esposito Garcia, this one. From the clergy of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Washington until now, an official of the Dicastery for Bishops, appointed auxiliary of the same ecclesial community and promoted to the titular see of Tabla, greetings and apostolic blessing. A bishop appointed and sent by Christ to serve everywhere as a shepherd and father in faith diligently teaches in the manner of the apostles whatever concerns God and the life lived authentically according to the gospel so that the Christian community may continually grow in the Holy Spirit, given, giving witness to the, in this world to the truth. Motivated by such concern, the ordinary of Washington, our venerable brother, Wilton Daniel Gregory, Cardinal of the Holy Roman Church, not very long ago earnestly petitioned for an auxiliary bishop owing to the great measure of pastoral duty. Indeed, we, who are well disposed to such a request, gladly grant it for this reason we chose you, beloved son, for, from the presbyterate to carry out this ministry on account of your spiritual gifts, practical experience, sound learning and prudence, mindful also of your service to us and to the Church, clearly shown in the Roman Curia, qualities which, we hope, will enable you to serve well the Universal Church. Therefore, after careful consultation with the Dicastery for Bishops, by virtue of our apostolic authority, we, appoint you Auxiliary Bishop of the Community of Washington, at the same time promoting you to the titular see of Tabla, conferring upon you all the rights and obligations which pertain to this same office according to the canon law. As to your Episcopal ordination, we gladly permit that you may receive it from any Catholic bishop outside the city of Rome the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must duly make the profession of faith and in like manner take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors. Finally, we exhort you to carry out your office ardently, working in close communion with your Metropolitan Archbishop each day and trusting yourself as well as your ministry to the gentle intercession of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, that she may implore for you the light of the Holy Spirit to preach zealously and wisely the Lord and his gospel, the one in whom each of his faithful finds the words of eternal life. Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the 19th day of the month of December, 
in the year of the Lord 2022, the 10th of our pontificate. And it is signed, Francis. Now, the other one. <laughs> Francis, bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Evelio Manjiva Rayala, from the clergy of the Archdiocese of Washington, and until now, pastor there of St. Mary's Parish, appointed auxiliary bishop of the same Metropolitan Church, and likewise promoted to the titular see of Aetus, greetings and apostolic blessing. Vessels of God's action and of his wisdom and power, we should reveal in ourselves the one who has mercy on all and calls man forth into his likeness, so that he may acquire a knowledge of God and may venerate with integrity the faith of faith, the mystery of the incarnation, and ever celebrate it with due reverence. As we draw from this wonderful source of hope, of spiritual progress towards God and of newness of life, we decide to prepare for the Lord everything which is known to establish the progress of the Universal Church. Accordingly, it is with paternal affection that we turn our attention to the urgent needs of the beloved flock of Washington, whose ordinary, our venerable brother Wilton Daniel Gregory, Cardinal of the Holy Roman Church, not very long ago earnestly requested the assistance of a an auxiliary bishop to carry out the ministry of his archdiocese, in order that he might more effectively foster the spiritual growth of the people of God. And so, it, se it seemed only fitting to entrust this responsibility to you, beloved son, since we have come to know you as one who is endowed with the requisite qualities of mind and heart for undertaking suitably this episcopal mission. Therefore, upon consultation with the Dicastery for Bishops, by your apostolic authority, we appoint you auxiliary bishop of the renowned metropolitan community of Washington and name you titular bishop of the See of Aetus, granting you the due rights and imposing the relative obligations which are connected to this mandate. You may receive episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in accordance with the norms of ecclesiastical law. Finally, beloved son, as we exhort you to carry out your episcopal ministry in close communion with the dedicated chief shepherd of this local church, we also beseech Almighty God to assist you to so guide the faithful by what you say and do that the Church, which the Lord established as a pledge of salvation, may, through these people, give praise to the Lord and safeguard everyone proclaiming truth and peace. Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the 19th day of the month of December in the year of the Lord, 2022, the 10th of our pontificate, and it is signed, Francis.
my beloved brothers Juan and Evelio. With all my heart, I welcome you to this day in your life. The Church in the Archdiocese of Washington rejoices with you on this joyful day for you and for all of us. You will soon take your place among God's people in a new relationship that is intended to help us all to understand better the words of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians, as he summarized for them and for all those living in every age of the Church concerning the diversity of graces that the Holy Spirit bestows on the family of faith for the building up of the body of Christ. Your new office plunges you deeper into the mystery of Christ, begun for both of you in the waters of baptism. You were then first configured to Christ along with every one of us in that sacred life-giving water. Your priestly lives have since demonstrated your own steadfast spirit of compassionate self-giving and generous ministry, which will soon be intensified as you become the Church's bishops. Both of you have personal histories that have prepared you extremely well for this new share of Christ-ordained ministry. Evelio, you became a manual laborer as you adopted to your new home in the United States of America. Like countless others before you, you earned your upkeep with demanding work. You know very well the countless gifts that our immigrant brothers and sisters continue to bring to our nation as hard workers in many different occupations. Jesus was known as a common laborer and was often referred to as the son of a carpenter before he became he began his public ministry. People called him an everyday worker before they began to call him rabbi. He never lost that understanding of the dignity of hard work, and neither must you. People will be more inclined to listen to and to believe you when they know that you understand the struggles and the trials that they themselves endure. We have a considerable number of outstanding priests in this local church who were attorneys before they became our priests. Washington is a place with lots of lawyers. Now we will have in you, Juan, a bishop who is an attorney. God help us. <laughs> One, you have spent years studying the law, both civil and canonical. Your recent service to the Holy See has provided you with a clear perspective of the importance of balancing and applying justice and mercy in the care of Christ's people. Your priestly heart has been shaped and formed as you helped Pope Francis to find, to identify, and to select praiseworthy candidates for the episcopacy. You know firsthand the qualities that the Church seeks in such candidates. Now, based upon your history, you must begin to practice those very same virtues within this local church. To your families here assembled, and to all those in your native countries, I offer a word of profound gratitude for helping you to discover and to love Christ Jesus. In truth, today, would never have dawned 
if you had not first found faith within your homes and around your family tables. Make sure that you always find time to thank them, to honor them, and to tell them how much you love them. It is not easy to be a bishop in today's church. Like those earlier bishops who were called to the service during different moments of ecclesial hardships, you will be misunderstood, on occasion ridiculed, and even condemned, just as Jesus was, and as he told his first disciples that they would be as well. However, there are also countless blessings that you too will discover in the joy that you will bring to and receive from God's people. As Pope Francis has admonished us, when we acquire the smell of the sheep, the members of the church will entrust to us at their deepest spiritual desires and longings. You must constantly comfort and encourage all of the faithful of the church to deepen their love for Christ. The office of bishop imposes three traditional obligations upon those of us who accept this responsibility. You must govern God's people. Govern, governance is not mere domination, manipulation, or intimidation. Rather, ecclesial governance seeks to bring God's people together in safety and in the sure hope of living within a community of love. A successful bishop is always attempting to connect the people of God in a bond of unity with all the members of the church, both locally and universally. A bishop is a teacher of the church's faith, not selectively or occasionally. Your teaching will win hearts when people see you live the truth that you announce. Saint Pope Paul VI wisely informed us that contemporary man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers, or if he listens to teachers, he does so because they are witnesses. The treasure of the church's doctrine is entrusted in a distinct way to bishops, as we must always be teachers who focus first on Christ and invite our people to come to know and love him through our teaching. Finally, a bishop must sanctify the flock. We do so best when we pray with them, when we celebrate the sacraments with them, and when we bless them in those countless moments of great joy and deep sorrow. A bishop seeks to reconcile sinners, especially those who may often be thought of as outside of the embrace of the church. Above all, a bishop draws people to Christ in the Eucharist. There you must preach and inspire people to long for the Lord who is present to us in word and in sacrament. Juan and Evelio, as bishops, we cannot possibly fulfill those responsibilities without the help and support and collaboration of our brother priests and deacons. Together with them, we serve the faithful in love. The faithful themselves must also be a constant source of wisdom and inspiration for us. As you already know, many of the people who enter our lives are far more advanced along the path of holiness than we are. We must listen to them as an integral part of our ministry. 
the entire church is engaged in that process called synodality at this very moment, listening to each other under the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that we might become even more perfectly God's holy people in word and in deed. A bishop's heart must be open to everyone, the young, the old, the sick, the immigrant, but most especially the poor. Like Christ Jesus himself, we must strive to welcome all with gentleness of spirit and love. Bishops are called to demonstrate integrity of life. There are few circumstances that can break the hearts of the faithful more quickly than a bishop who is discovered to have been unfaithful to the promises that we make on the day of our ordination or are inattentive to the needs of the people entrusted to our care. Beginning today, you will renew and deepen those sacred promises that you already once made when you were first ordained as a deacon and then a priest. Let us become ever more men of holiness, compassion, and joy, so that all of God's people can more clearly see the living Christ in us and through our words and our actions. Amen. Juan and Ivelio. La antigua regla de los santos padres establece que quien ha sido elegido para el orden episcopal sea previamente examinado, examinado ante el pueblo sobre su fe y su furo, futuro ministerio. Por lo tanto, Queridos hermanos, quieren consecrar, consecrarse hasta la muerte al ministerio episcopal que hemos heredado de los apóstoles y por, los, por la imposición de las nuestras manos les va a ser conferido con la gracia del Espíritu Santo. Quieren anunciar con fiel, fidelidad y constancia el Evangelio de Jesucristo. Quieren conservar en íntegro y puro el depósito de la fe, tal como fue recibido de los apóstoles y que la Iglesia ha conservado siempre y en todo lugar. Quieren edificar la iglesia, cuerpo de Cristo, y permanecer en su unidad con el orden de los obispos, bajo la autoridad del sucesor de Pedro. Quieren obedecer fielmente al sucesor de Pedro. Quieren cuidar del pueblo santo de Dios y dirigirlo por el camino del, de la salvación con amor del pad, de Padre, ayudados por sus presbíteros y diáconos. Quieren ser siempre bondadosos y comprensivos con los pobres, con los emigrantes, y, todos, y con todos los necesitados. Quieren como buenos pastores buscar siempre a las ovejas dispersas 
y conduci conducirlos las al aprisco del Señor. Quieren orar continuamente a Dios Padre Todopoderoso en favor del pueblo santo y ejercer de manera irrevocable las funciones del sumo sacerdocio. Que Dios mismo lleve a término esta obra buena que en ustedes ha comenzado. Please stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that the loving kindness of Almighty God, providing for the welfare of the Church, will grant to these chosen ones an abundance of His grace. Let us kneel. Saint 
Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Anthony of Padua, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Jose Gabriel de Rosario Broquero, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Louis, King of France, pray for us. Saint Juan Diego, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Comfort all the trouble and afflicted with your mercy. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and as you raise the horn of priestly grace over these your servants, pour out upon them the power of your blessing, through Christ our Lord. Let us stand.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be. It is you who established order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined a righteous people born of Abraham, who instituted rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministry, who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now pour forth upon these chosen ones the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary to the glory and unfailing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that these your servants, whom you have chosen for the episcopate, may nourish your holy flock and may be without reproach and may without reproach exercise before you the high priesthood serving you night and day, that they may unceasingly cause your face to shine upon us and offer the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the strength of the spirit of the high priesthood, they may have authority to forgive sins according to your command, that they may apportion offices according to your precept and loosen every bond according to the authority you gave the apostles. May they be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, both now and forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. One, may God, who has made you a sharer of the high priest of Christ, himself pour on upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing.
et alio. May God, who has made you a sharer in the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing. One, receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Evelio, receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. One, receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorned with unfa undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Evelio, receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. One, receive the mitre and let the splendor of holiness shine in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, 
you may merit to receive an unfailing crown of glory. Evelio, receive the mitre and let the splendor of holiness shine in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may merit to receive an unfading, unfading crown of glory. One, receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God. Evelio. Receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God. And 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accepta, Señor, con agrado, in ofrenda que te presentamos por tu iglesia y por tus servios recién ordinados obispos, y ya que les has otorgado en plenitud de sacerdocio, concédeles la abundancia de las virtudes apostólicas para bien de tu grey, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself, and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, 
be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, with Mario and Roy, with Juan and Evilio, our auxiliary bishops, with Donald William, our retired archbishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Acuérdate, Señor, de tus hijos y de todos los aquí reunidos, cuya fe y entrega bien conoces, por ellos y todos los suyos, por el perdón de sus pecados y la salvación que esperan, te ofrecemos, y ellos mismos te ofrecen, este sacrificio de alabanza a ti, eterno Dios, vivo y verdadero. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servants, Juan and Evelio, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve these offerings in every respect. Make it acceptable, spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, we may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Y a nosotros, pecadores, siervos tuyos, que confiamos en tu infinita misericordia, admítenos a esta asamblea de los santos apóstoles y mártires, Juan el Bautista, Esteban, Matías y Bernabé, Ignacio, Alejandro, Marcelino y Pedro, Felicidad y Perpetua, Águeda, Lucía, Inés, Cecilia, Anastasia, y de todos los santos, que acéptenos en su compañía, no por nuestros méritos, sino conforme a tu bondad por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Oh. 
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Oremos. Multiplica, Señor, en estos siervos tuyos, obispos, los dones de tu gracia, que brotan de este sacrificio eucarístico, para que cumplan santamente su ministerio pastoral, pastoral y por su fidelidad en tu servicio reciban de ti el primero pri, premio eterno. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. One of the things that makes today such a special moment is that it brings so many people together from not just this local church, but from the church universal. And so I thank you in a very, very special way for being present here today. Clergy, religious, faithful of all kinds. I thank in a special way my brother bishops for being here in such number. Uh, this is a four cardinal event. So it must have taken effect. Thank you. I'd now like to present our two newest bishops. Consolador. 
A ti Dios te alabamos. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. A ti eterno Padre te venera. Por la Cardinal Gregory, Cardinal Whirl, Cardinal Somali and Rosa Chavez, Archbishop Pierre, Archbishop Broglio, Bishops Dorsonville and Campbell, Bishop Menjivar, brother bishops and priests, Monsignor Jameson, family and friends. On December 19th, the day of the publication of the appointment as Auxiliary Bishop of Washington, I was in Argentina celebrating my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. That day, Cardinal Gregory graciously agreed to read a few words on my behalf. And you're going to have to take my word that I did not talk to Archbishop Pierre before Mass. He quoted my words which I intended, in fact, to repeat to you today. <laughs> we did not talk earlier. So I won't repeat the words uh, that Archbishop Pierre read, but those are words that are very dear to me precisely because of what the Archbishop said. Pope Francis pronounced those words to all the bishops that met with him here in this very beautiful cathedral. And these words have resonated deeply in my prayer because they are a beautiful, profound, and detailed description of the pastoral ministry of every bishop and indeed of every priest because they describe a life and ministry consecrated, dedicated entirely to serve others, to serve the people of God, and in so doing, to serve Christ and His Church. With these thoughts in mind, and with a very humble heart, I express my deepest gratitude to the Holy Father and to Cardinal Gregory for this new opportunity to continue to serve everyone in our beautiful Archdiocese of Washington. I humbly entrust myself to your prayers as I promise you that I will pray for you. A mis padres, 
mis dos hermanas, mis amigos más cercanos, gracias por el don de la fe, el ejemplo, el apoyo a mi vocación sacerdotal y el acompañamiento incondicional que siempre me han brindado. A nuestra querida comunidad hispana presente hoy aquí, gracias. Gracias por haberme acompañado siempre en mi ministerio pastoral. Gracias por todo lo que contribuyen y enriquecen a la vida de fe, no solo en la Iglesia, en general en los Estados Unidos, sino en particular en nuestra arquidiócesis de Washington. Finalmente, una parola en italiano per riconoscere e per ringraziare i miei superiori e i colleghi nel Dicastero per i Vescovi presso la Santa Sede, dove ho avuto l'onore di prestare servizio per questi ultimi cinque anni e fino a qualche settimana fa. A miei amici dell'Italia, alcuni qui presenti, grazie dal più profondo del cuore per la vostra amicizia, per il vostro sostegno, per tutto quello che avete fatto per me in questi cinque anni, per avermi accolto a casa, per avermi fatto sentire un membro delle vostre famiglie. Many, many thanks from the bottom of my heart to everyone who through their talent, time and dedication has made possible this beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you and God bless you. How can I repay the Lord for all the good done for me? ¿Con qué pagaré al Señor todo el bien que me hizo? Alzaré el cáliz de salvación e invocaré al Señor. Te ofreceré un sacrificio de alabanza e invocaré tu nombre. Cumpliré mis votos al Señor en presencia de mi pueblo. The beautiful celebration of the Holy Eucharist, which we have celebrated, has been the most eloquent way of giving thanks to the Lord for all the good He has done for me, for us, for my family, and for our local and universal church. I am very conscious of my poverty, of my unworthiness, At the same time, I am conscious that this call and this anointing, anointing is not about me. It is about you. It is about others. Pope Francis said in his 2014th Holy Thursday homily, our anointing is meant for anointing God's holy and faithful people, for baptizing and for confirming, healing and sanctifying them, blessing, comforting and evangelizing them. Thank you. So I would like to thank the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for calling me to this beautiful ministry of sanctifying the holy people of God. I would like to also thank His Eminence Cardinal Gregory for your trust and for your affection, for accepting me as your collaborator, 
I also thank Archbishop Christophe Pierre for everything that he does for the good of the Church as Apostolic Nuncio in the United States. Estoy infinitamente agradecido con Dios por la presencia de mi madre, de mis hermanas y de mi familia, por la presencia de todos ustedes en esta celebración. Pero por más de 18 años de vida sacerdotal, mi familia ha ido creciendo y multiplicándose porque ya todos ustedes son mi familia. Ustedes son mi madre, mis hermanos, mis hermanas, mi pueblo. Mi gran deseo es que como discípulos de Jesús caminemos juntos, que en este caminar no dejemos a nadie atrás. Si alguien se cae o se desanima, animémoslo. Y digámosle, ánimo, levántate, camina. Que María, Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, nos cubra siempre con su manto. Y que San Óscar Romero interceda ante Dios para que nuestra iglesia y sus pastores seamos siempre fieles a Cristo y a su pueblo. Thank you and may God bless you. Everyone here is invited to a reception at the Mayflower Hotel, where we earlier had a lunch and gathering. The walking directions can be found in your program, and for those who might need a bus, there is one available. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and as he has willed to set you as high priest, over his people, so may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is eternal. Amen. May he grant that the clergy and people he has chosen to unite by his gracious help be happily governed by his providence and your stewardship for many years to come. Amen. Freed from adversity, may they obey God's commandments submitting in faith to your ministry. May they abound in all that is good so that they may enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age and with you be found worthy to share the company of the citizens of eternity. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.